you can order the water pump used in the video on the carparts.com website via the link in the description. Turn off your vehicle's ignition. Set the parking brake. Pull the hood release handle and open the hood. For safety reasons, we advise you to disconnect the battery. To do so, we recommend watching the video How to Replace the Dodge Ram 1500 Car Battery. You need to drain the coolant circuit. Get a fluid collection container to collect the coolant that will flow out. On this vehicle, the radiator is equipped with a bleed screw, which you can access from the underside of the vehicle. On the driver's side, connect a plastic tube to the bleed port to collect the coolant directly in the collection container. You can then unscrew the bleed screw using a ratchet and a 10 mm Allen socket to let the coolant flow. To facilitate the flow of coolant, open the cap of the coolant expansion tank. You can use special compressed air tools to effectively bleed your circuit. You can also rinse it with plenty of water to clean out grime from the expansion tank and circuit. Close the bleed screw. Remove the plastic tube. Hey, it's Alex from carparts.com. If you enjoyed this video and want to support us, like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, back to work. You must now remove the serpentine belt. Using a breaker bar and a one half inch drive extension socket, loosen the belt by turning the serpentine belt tensioner counterclockwise. Meanwhile, remove the serpentine belt from the tensioner, then from the various pulleys. Get a fluid collection container to collect the coolant that will flow out. On this vehicle, the water pump is connected to two coolant hoses. Using adjustable pliers or the tool used in the video, compress the coolant hose retaining ring, then remove the hose. Do the same on the other hose. Using a ratchet, an extender, a 10 mm, 13 mm, and 16 mm sockets, unscrew the 12 bolts holding the water pump and the idler pulley which also holds the water pump to the engine block. You can see in these images the various sockets to be used depending on the bolts holding the water pump. The water pump is now free, however it is often difficult to remove. Remove the water pump. Remove the seal. To avoid any risk of leaks, clean the water pump seal surface thoroughly. You can use a razor blade to remove the various residues from the seal surface. Clean the seal surface with brake cleaner and a cloth. You can order the water pump used in the video on the carparts.com website via the link in the description. Get the new water pump. Everyone's natural reflex is to take the water pump in hand and turn the pump pulley to check that this element is rotating correctly. But this is a serious mistake that can irreversibly damage the water pump. You need to pour coolant into the pump and to turn it around 10 times. This prevents subsequent leaks, as the pump must never run dry. Take the new seal, then put it in place on the new water pump. Roughly install a bolt to hold it in position when putting the water pump back in place. Get the new water pump and put it in place. Roughly screw the first bolt back on. You can now roughly tighten all the bolts holding the water pump and the idler pulley. Final tightening of the bolts is applied using a torque wrench, following the tightening sequence shown in the video. If you want to know which tools and parts we use in this video, just check the description and you'll find everything you need.
Using adjustable pliers or the tool used in the video, put the two hoses back in place on the water pump. You can now put the serpentine belt back in place. To do so, we recommend watching the video, How to Replace the Serpentine Belt Dodge Ram 1500. Now you need to refill the radiator with coolant and purge any air from the circuit. To do this, we recommend that you watch our video, How to Perform a Coolant Flush on a Dodge Ram 1500. The video also shows how to expel air from the circuit when refilling it. Reconnect the battery. Operation complete.